look at the setting Miami sun. Quote, it was a Bronco sunset, said the 13-year-old junior Schwami. The sun has set on Super Bowl 33 and perhaps on the career of John Elway. We take one last trip back to Miami with Chris Berman and Tom Jackson. All right, gang, thank you. And it is the day after, but certainly the thrill is not gone for the Denver Broncos. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Jim Kelly, Sterling Sharp, and we saw a little bit of history made here at Pro Player Stadium on Sunday. Well, the Denver Broncos started the year when they won their 13 straight games thinking about history. All right, they didn't go 19-0, but in the history books now they are, as 34-19 winners over the Falcons, one of only seven teams to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Mike Shanahan, now one of only five coaches to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. John Elway, one of only six quarterbacks to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. To the victors went the spoils. After you win a Super Bowl, or you win two Super Bowls, I don't know if people realize what a great feeling that is. You know, a lot of people are happy going into the championship game or getting to the playoffs or certain goals. We had one goal at the beginning of the year. No question, that was winning the Super Bowl. Anything, else, anything less than that was unacceptable. But our guys really believe that going to the playoffs is not what our organization was about. Winning the Super Bowl was our goal. And I believe when you have goals and you've got high expectations, then you have a chance to achieve those expectations. I said all week, I said this year, I said, it's a 90% chance I'm going to quit. The last thing I want to do is shut the door. I don't want to say I'm done and then get into April and say, or May or March, and say that, uh, you know what, I think I can play one more year. So I, want, I just want to take the time to do that. And, and not close the door uh, if the opportunity is still there. Tommy, of course, you were there on Monday morning. You saw Mike Shanahan, John Elway, obviously all smiles. Maybe the toothpicks in the eyes just a little bit. I mean, you are up a little bit late after, uh, after winning the Super Bowl. I thought when they won last year against Green Bay, it was a relief. It was a hallelujah. I mean, it was a marvelous game, of course. This time... Two in a row, it's a Bronco coronation. A little bit more validation for this football team. I was in the locker room again for the game, and a little bit different than last year. A little bit more confidence this year, I thought, as they went out to play. But look, they played the way they prepared. The wide receivers did a great job all week of catching the football. They did that for John Elway during the game. John had a great week throwing the football, had a great game in Super Bowl 33. So I think that it may sound cliche-ish, but you will play the way you practice. They both Focused well all week, Sterling, it carried over into the game. I was excited about the game plan because what the game plan showed me about the Super Bowl was showing John Elway's appreciation. Appreciation for taking the back seat, allowing Terrell Davis to become the newfound leader and carry the football team. Appreciation for in games where they wanted him to throw the ball, he threw it and threw it very effectively. And let's face it, he hadn't played well in Super Bowls up until this point. In the Super Bowl we just saw, he threw the ball, threw the ball beautifully, and I thought that this was an opportunity for us to remember John Elway the way we want to remember John Elway, and that is throwing the football with precision. Well, there's no doubt, but most of the, during the course of the week, the focus was purely on the running game. Jamal Anderson and Terrell Davis, but John Elway worked Mike Shanahan's game plan to perfection. It was evident that Shanahan wanted Elway to shine. During the course of the ball game, throwing the football when you thought he would be running it. Quarterback draw, Don close to the end zone, and more importantly, Look at Howard Griffith, two touchdowns. He wanted to make sure that there were no description who was going to be the MVP of this game. Yeah, on the one-yard line, let's see. No Terrell Davis. We got Howard Griffith. We got you got John Elway. We got Sammy Winder. We got Howard Howard Canada. We got all those Broncos. Well, the, the, the Falcons task, of course, was tough. I mean, when you think about since December of a season ago, Denver is 22-2. and two. The Falcons went 11 in a row coming in this game, and certainly by losing the Super Bowl, it was no disgrace. On paper, they were playing a team a lot better than them, and on the field, that turned out the way that it went. But they were in the game till late in the third quarter at 17-6. Things during the week, maybe not quite Dan Reeves-type football, epitomized by Eugene Robinson's episode on Saturday night. I'm not going to try to, to run from you. I'm not going to try to to hide from you or to duck down or I, I, I won't do that I, I'll be a man about it and I'll be compassionate and humble as possible and I'll let the lawyer kind of handle but I I won't run from you at all I'm not gonna crucify Eugene Robson uh, you know nobody's more embarrassed about what happened than he is and you know this is a football team that, that I think really uh, cares about each other and that love that we have for each other is unconditional and 
you know, we're going to stick with uh, Eugene and uh, help him in every way we possibly can. You live and you learn. You just try to, next time, you know, don't put yourself in a situation. I know that's my lesson I learned from my situation, and I'm sure that's the lesson he's going to take from us. Once we get out there on the football field, you know, it's pretty much squashed. I mean, you know, we go out there to play football, and I think uh, everybody did a good job, actually, of, of not letting that distract him. This is football. We can't even blame that situation on Eugene, man. This is, I mean, 11 on 11 out there, and, uh, you know, we just didn't get the job done. You know, Atlanta could have looked at it by saying, hey, Morton Anderson makes that field goal of under 30 yards, it would have been 7-6. If they don't gamble on fourth down, Morton Anderson makes a field goal, it would have been 10-6 at the time. It was, what, three minutes or something left in the third quarter, 17-6, still in the game. But I, I feel you could analyze this, Tom, but Atlanta was just hoping to stay close. Well, I, I think to some extent, but boom, look, when you come to the Super Bowl, handling that experience the first time around is difficult for every football team, and it was for Atlanta. You go all the way back to Wednesday of the off week, the statements by Dan Reeves about Mike Shanahan and John Elway, all the way to Saturday night, Eugene Robinson getting arrested for solicitation the night before the game. The Atlanta Falcons did not do a good job of focusing on the task at hand, which was playing a football game and it carried over Sterling into the football you're game. You're talking about the game plan of the Atlanta Falcons and the character of their head coach Dan Reeves and they were totally out of character. They talk about running the football. They talk about not turning the football over. They didn't do either. Also going for it on fourth down. Talk to you on Sunday countdown about Dan Reeves blinking at the sight of Mike Shanahan and John Elway running away with the Super Bowl. Going for it on fourth down. I thought Dan blinked and when he did he opened the floodgates and I thought his team lost a lot of confidence because he did not reward them after turnovers by getting points. Everything that went on, just like Tommy said, Jim, was out of character for this football team, so it was out of character for them to try and win the game. There's no doubt, and they're going to have to pay for it for about the next six months, because I understand exactly what the Atlanta Falcons are going to go through right now. The regular season, yes, you can go through two, three days, and then you got to get ready for the next game with the game plan. But Super Bowl, you can go through six months of answering the same question, and believe me, it hurts, because at times you think, is this the last time I'm ever going to have a chance to go to a Super Bowl and try to win one? But before we say, oh, Atlanta, you know, they, they didn't see, uh, they didn't play the way the team that we saw win at Minnesota. For the first time in their 33 years, the right. Atlanta Falcons Marvelous. around the NFL, Matt. Marvelous. C congratulations yep. to them. Mm -hmm. They just ran into a defending champ to turn out to be a buzzsaw. Thank you, fellas. Meanwhile, you are a fan of a team that's just won its second straight Super Bowl after four previously unsuccessful tries. What to do? Hmm. Well, it is Sunday night. Got to get up and go to work early. Well, apparently, a few didn't and still had a few hours to head downtown to get in some mild rioting. Yes, it was poor man's pyrotechnics, part of the unruly post-game festivities in downtown Denver, which soon resembled a war zone. A smaller but rowdier crowd than last year showed up. Torch things, broke windows, and other things. Police soon showed up with tear gas. Some riding folks came prepared with gas masks. The mayor's office says damage is extensive. Several people were arrested. Well, the big machine is just starting to roll here on your 24-hour sports source, ESPN News. Pause for the cause. Plenty more. That bridge for a while. I'm going to enjoy this win and because and, uh, that's what I've been working nine, it's what he came back for and, and what I've been working nine months for. So I'm going to enjoy it a little bit. The most valuable player of the game. I don't know if it's John's last game, but I think there's a good chance it could be. And if you're going to go out, what a way to go out. I'm. We got a bunch of guys in there trying to talk about a three-peat and I don't know if they're getting to him or not, but I know it's very special. If he comes back, there's no question in my mind we'd be in Atlanta going for this many. What we knew is that John Elway, as long as we have him in our backfield, he can make things happen. It doesn't matter, you know, what, what's the circumstances surrounding the game. If we knew if they shut Terrell down or tried to, John could beat him in the air, and they were able to do that. We gave him a lot of different looks, you know, particularly in the red zone. You know, we blitzed him, we pulled off into a zone, and I think he was a little bit confused. You know, he made some bad throws and bad decisions, and we played pretty good on defense. You play your whole career to get an opportunity to win a Super Bowl. It takes a lot to go into it. Great coaching, great players, a little bit of luck. Uh, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. We worked hard all year, and, man, it feels sweeter than ever. Hey, do a little dance, hey, make a little love, what? Get down tonight, yeah! Get down tonight! <laughs> First of all, I think uh, any time you say that you didn't play up to your potential, you take something away from your opposition, and I thought... Uh, you know, that uh, Denver did a great job in, in all areas. And uh, so they had a little bit to do in with us not playing up to as well as we needed to play to have a chance to win the game. And the big difference to me was uh, 
you know, the red zone, we had to settle for two field goals. We missed one. We missed the fourth down. We throw two interceptions. You know, against a good football team, it's got a great offense like Denver does. You can't afford to miss those, those type of opportunities. Dan Reeves, class act till the end. Now, many teams have tried. All have failed at the elusive three-peat. The last two in line fell just one win shy. Fresh from their second straight Super Bowl win, the Broncos head back home for a welcome home victory parade and a rally. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kyle Tyer. And I'm Matt Jablow. And today for Gary Shapiro, we've got team coverage of this afternoon's return of Denver's Super Bowl champions. We'll start with 9 News sports anchor Steve Johns, who's out at DIA. Steve, have the players arrived yet? They have just landed, as a matter of fact, Matt Jablow. And I got kind of a kick uh, out of your comment earlier about the fact that we'll be covering every single aspect of their arrival, today's parade, and, of course, uh, all of the festivities that will take place following uh, the Broncos' second consecutive Super Bowl victory 34-19 over the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, they took off about 9.30 this morning Eastern time from Fort Lauderdale on a 777. And as I mentioned, they have just arrived. The plane is uh, slowly approaching hangar number eight for United Airlines just outside of gate four. Uh, Chuck Cannon, one of the representatives for uh, Denver International Airport, recommended that I tell all Broncos fans don't come to the airport because you will not be allowed in to see the team. Go downtown where the parade will be taking place. Uh, as I mentioned, as soon as the players arrive, we will do our best, uh, Matt and Kyle, to get interviews and uh, comments from the players as they get set to board one of five buses that will take them to Coors Field and then, of course, on to 20th and Broadway where the parade will begin. Back to you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Steve. Kim Christensen and Jim Beneman are co-anchoring our coverage of the parade and rally set to begin in just a couple of hours. They join us now from Civic Center Park. Kim and Jim, I understand that fans started showing up three hours ago. They have been flowing in ever since. Yeah, they started showing up early this morning. We're guessing, what, maybe 3,000 folks? Yeah, I'd say probably 5,000 people right now. The, the amazing thing is, uh, Kim, as you look to the east, just waves of people coming in from the east. And uh, All over the I think a lot of folks figured that maybe that was their best parking opportunity. So they are on the other side of the state capitol, walking west towards the city and county building behind us. You see they got the podium set up. And one thing I know that a lot of the schools were saying, well, a few schools were saying, uh, is uh, as early as Friday. If the Broncos win and there is a parade, there will be no school. Right. And uh, I don't know if all these kids uh, had uh, formal uh, passes to miss or they're just playing hooky. We but a lot see of kids a lot of them. A lot of kids and a lot of parents with them, which is nice, too. So they took the day off from work, apparently. But, yeah, they're, they're really streaming in right now. They're doing a sound check, and they're running some of those nine news promotions on the jumbotrons behind us, just getting the crowd all riled up and everything. You know, one excited. thing, uh, one thing the, the question of the day, how can these little speakers next to us make so much noise? Yeah, we're kind of wondering. Speaker technology <laughs> has come so far from our college days, hasn't it? I tell you what, we've got a little speaker bank next to us just about knocked us off our chairs though, when they get that thing wound up. But it's going to have to be loud because the fans are going to be screaming, and it should be a great afternoon. We're expecting the team in at uh, the airport any moment now, and they should be hopping onto those buses for the right. parade in about two hours. And if you remember last year, it was a wonderfully warm day, like 60 degree plus. It's not that warm, but it's not too bad either. No, it's not bad at all. Right now we want to go up and uh, check with Kathy Saban along the parade route. And uh, Kathy, one thing last year, of course, they really didn't have enough crowd control. The barricades were not set up. So the people were getting really so close to the players and the vehicles that were carrying the players. It really was a safety issue. Mm -hmm. How does the crowd control seem where you are along the route? Well, Jim, they've been putting up the metal barriers for the past hour or so. Again, this is something that they didn't do last year. The metal barriers are in place. We're at the entrance to the parade here at 20th and Broadway. So they're hoping to keep the fans back off the roads, off of the trucks. Uh, good luck to that. We've got some excited people out here today. They're gathering now, even though the Broncos won't be here for a while. You can see behind me a sea of orange and blue. He really uh, talked a lot about the fans last night and the stadium issue and what that meant to this team. Um, an interesting man, and if you read some of the articles about him in the paper this weekend, there's Annabelle Bolin behind him talking about how he he is often misunderstood. He's a very quiet guy and, and at sometimes seems a little bit gruff. Yeah, I think that uh, misunderstood certainly, and uh, one thing that's right there, Mike yes. Shanahan, and I think that that's uh, certainly an indication of how badly Pat Bolin wants to in, win year in and year out. He went out a few years ago and, and luckily stole Mike Shanahan away from the San Francisco 49ers. That was so interesting to hear him talk about that last night. And I think we see Janet Elway behind him, so that's a good sign. 
as, as uh, Todd pointed out, John Elway did make the plane. There's John. Can't tell that. Uh, I think that uh, might be Peggy Shanahan there. John right and there, Janet Elway. Yeah. There you go. And it looks like the Kubiaks perhaps behind them. Mm -hmm. It's a little hard to tell. Uh, Steve Johns, we know you're there a lot closer than we are. Uh, are there any fans who had uh, enough access to, to root these folks on as they get off the plane? Come in, Steve Johns. <laughs> we know you're out there. I, I just now hear you. Uh, as you can see, the Broncos, uh, one by one, are are uh, coming down the uh, the rampway. John Elway with Janet and the family. Uh, you see Gary Kubiak and his family coming down. General Manager John Beak. We're going to do our best to try and get uh, a couple of the coaches uh, and players as they come down uh, the rampway. John Elway coming down the ramp right now. You know, Steve, uh, the Bolins with the sunglasses, Pat, or I should say, John Elway, the uh, the short sleeve T-shirt, if you will, certainly still dressed for Miami. Hey. They'll they'll need a jacket. Congratulations, we're very happy. All right, looks like Steve is waiting to hopefully talk to John Elway. Is John Beek making his way down the plane. John doesn't look tired to me. <laughs> I'll tell you what, 38 years old, he looks good. <laughs> Maybe it's just. Exhilarance John, that's getting him through. Here we go. Congratulations. You, you look you look tired and, and with good reason. First of all, congratulations on your second consecutive Super Bowl and MVP trophy. Thanks. It was a great, great win, and, and uh, we're just glad to be back home. And uh, a little bit tired. It's been a long night, but uh, good to be back home. Can you describe the last 12 hours or so, what you guys did to celebrate it? And is it any more special the second time around? Ah, uh, they're all special because you know how hard, you know, we worked so hard for it and to finally get it. And uh, each one's special. Each one has its own little characteristics but uh, you know we just kind of relaxed last night enjoyed it and kind of sat there and stared at the same thing and said wow we did it again and uh, so it was unbelievable big celebration today a lot of people are waiting for you downtown and I know you don't want to look past today but talk about what this last year has meant to you personally well it's been a great year and, and uh, I couldn't have dreamed of it happening out better than it happened and uh, you know to be able to come back and and get back to back and then uh, and play like we did. It was an unbelievable feeling. So the best decision I've ever made in my life was to come back last year. And we hope you do it again. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, John Elway, a Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl MVP in the uh, 33rd Super Bowl in the National Football League. A lot more players, uh, as you can see, making their way down along with their families, uh, coaches as well. Everybody trying to find their way onto uh, one of at least five buses, uh, which will take them to Coors Field the players and coaches will then arrive and uh, board fire trucks at Coors and then eventually make their way down to 20th uh, and Broadway. I'm not sure exactly who I'm throwing to. I'll just toss it in the air and hope somebody grabs it. We'll See catch it. <laughs> Steve, we're seeing some pictures of the fans that are waiting for those players right now. Some of them still haven't washed their face or their arms or bodies from the orange and blue that they apparently had on yesterday as well or just reapplied it again today. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Steve, Steve Johnson, you still have contact with us? Okay, I was going to say it might be kind of fun to go back and do a little bit more people watching as people come down the uh, uh, the stairs from that aircraft. Uh, right now, we want to send it to our colleague Kevin Cork and uh, describe your your uh, position, Kevin, and what you're seeing at this point. Jim and Kim, I am in the crowd, as it were. You know, last year it was interesting, about 650,000 people, but of course last year, a different situation because it was a beautiful sunny day. I think fans had a better opportunity to plan to get down here, but as you might imagine, when you have two-time defending world champions like Denver does, the fans will indeed make their way down. i got to show you one guy. His name is Victor. He's from Westminster. Victor, step on forward. Now, you're a diehard Bronco fan of the highest order. I just want you to show the fans what you've done to demonstrate your loyalty to the team. Go ahead and turn around and show them the back. World champions. And folks, that's not tape, Kim and Jim. That's actually Victor's hair. That is what I call wild stuff. Now, if you've been here a long time like I have, you've suffered through the Super Bowl losses. How sweet is it to see a couple wins? This is great. This is great. We're happy. This is back to back. Can you believe it? Now, let me ask you this. Are, are your co-workers going to give you grief about having your hair like that? Not at all. They love it. They love it. They're all Bronco fans. Now, let me ask you, Candace, you're from Broomfield. Now, a lot of young people, you're about 18 years old, are taking the day off. Are you one of the many who yes, decided to uh, cash it in and come down here and support your team? No, well, we're definitely just going to be down here to support our guys. We love them. We're down here. We've watched the game since we were little. Yeah! And we're definitely supporting him all the way. We hope to see another victory next year. Hopefully we'll support John, whatever he decides to do, wow. though. Now, you mentioned whatever John decides to do. Let me ask you, if you had a vote in the Elway family, would you ask him to play again 
or would you say, go ahead and retire? I would say play again so we could get a third ring, so we can give one to each of his kids. Come back, John. Oh, we love you. We love you. Jim and Jim, that seems to be the consensus down here. Everyone wants John Elway to come back and play another year. At the very least, we can all expect him here at Civic Center Park in a couple of hours. Back to you for now. <laughs> well, you never know. Maybe he will. Uh, maybe he will answer the plea. You know, Kim, was interesting in the post-game news conference yesterday. Uh, somebody talked about the long bomb to Rod Smith for the touchdown and the excitement of winning back-to-back. And John Elway admitted, he said, you know, I thought this was going to be it, but I haven't made up my mind. This this could add a whole new wrinkle since we'd have the chance to go back and go for a third straight, which uh, no quarterback uh, has ever done before. So you never know. With this guy, you, you never just know. never know. He's so competitive. Yeah. And uh, we, in fact, uh, shared some of the story that was done on the Today Show this morning with his family afterwards, and they asked them to vote. Jim Gray from NBC asked them to vote. And you saw Jessica was the only one that definitely left her head down, said, I don't want him to. We're watching Terrell Davis exit the playing now too another great player that has meant so much to the city didn't necessarily like steal the game like he did last year but just solid play once again over 100 yards I'm tired right now you're tired right we'll talk about the last 12 hours what did you guys do to celebrate it's been a lot of celebrating going on and not enough sleep going on i know that i haven't i don't think i've slept a wink i, w I get the feeling though that you would uh, you would sacrifice sleep gladly on an annual basis to do this i would definitely do that <laughs> This has been uh, it's been routine the last two years, so it feels pretty good. You know, your contribution was different this year. You, you didn't gain the yardage. You didn't score the touchdowns. But you certainly opened up the passing game so John Elway and his receivers could be successful and lead this team to victory. Well, I knew one thing which was going into this game. There was a lot of talk about running the ball. Anytime you want to single out people as far as running the ball, there's going to be a lot of attention drawn to those players. And I knew my job was going to try to run the ball as hard as I could and, and try to take pressure off the passing game. And with John throwing the ball, taking pressure off the running game, uh, I knew that uh, some, somebody was going to have a big game. I, w I wasn't sure who, but I knew the running game was, uh, they were come up and try to stop the running game a little bit. But uh, I think I did my job, you know. I think I had a great game as far as I didn't fumble the ball, I ran hard, and I did my assignments. The guy that goes almost unrecognized on a regular basis, Howard Griffith. Talk about the job he did in that game. Griffith's always doing a great job for us, and I think this game he did something that is really uncharacteristic of, of Howard, and that's uh, running the ball. But um, the entire week, we saw something in their defense that allowed our fullback to get a ball on a counter play and sneak into the end zone. So we decided to take advantage of it. And with Howard uh, having some running skills from college, he, he, uh, he really showed that today. I know you guys are very close. Talk about, compare the feeling this year with last year's first Super Bowl championship, if you can. It's not, you know, I think this year's a little different. Last year, it was, it was somewhat the, a Cinderella story where we weren't supposed to be there and kind of came away with a, with a huge victory. This year, I think we were... You know, pick to go there, and uh, I think our team kind of handled it the same way. You know, going there as as the, the defending champions. I think once we got there, we took care of business as usual, and uh, it was a business trip. And our players were very confident going in that game and winning it. I know that you guys are tired. You got a long way to go today. Hang in there. Congratulations on Super Bowl champions once again. Terrell Davis, of course, uh, as we've been telling you, players continue to come down. Neil Smith making his way down the trailway right now. We're going to try and talk with him right now. Neil, can I talk with you real quick? Yeah. Welcome back to Colorado and Denver. First of all, congratulations on uh, being champion Super Bowl 33. Thanks very much. It was, um, it was an outstanding uh, football game we put together, and uh, we brought it back home where it needs to be at. I remember when you signed your deal two years ago with the Denver Broncos, you said you came here to help this club win a championship. You've now helped them win two consecutive. How special is the feeling? Oh, it feels good. I think the first one feels just as good as the second one, and uh, you know, we have uh, such a great group, and we, we, we play together, and, you know, I think because of Mike, the way he put things together, and, 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 and what he challenged us to, um, to achieve, um, this, is what, this is what the result is. Take us onto the field and what the feeling of the team was heading into the confrontation with an Atlanta Falcon team that seemed darn confident going in. Well, we had a lot of confidence. Uh, we, we feel like we've been here before, and we know exactly what to do as far as um, going out and get prepared for this ball game. And what we did is that we, we, we just took it um, a little bit a little bit patient this time. I think that um, we played with a league this time, and that really helped us in, um, in being comfortable, and we didn't have to come behind, and, and the defense really stepped up when we needed to. And they say defense wins championships. You guys did it once again. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.
Broncos defensive end Neil Smith. Uh, the players continue to come off of the plane. They will board uh, buses and then head to Coors Field. Of course, then board fire trucks and then head to 20th and Broadway, where today's parade is set to begin about 2 o'clock this afternoon. We'll throw it back to you guys. You know, uh, Steve John, stay with us for a second. Steve, you, you think of somebody like a Neil Smith who spent all those all-pro seasons toiling in Kansas City where the Chiefs would get close but not quite close enough to reach up and grab a ring. Here he comes here two years back to back. What a story for a guy like Neil Smith. You know, and, and Jim, that's exactly right. He just sort of touched upon that. And I think there are so many players with this Denver Broncos football team that went through similar scenarios only to come to this club for one reason, uh, and they knew it was to win a championship. But guys like Seth Joyner, Howard Griffith, Ed McCaffrey, who, whose story is well documented about being dumped uh, by Dan Reeves and the then New York Giants. Uh, it's just such a special uh, time for this franchise. Mike Shanahan and the team that he has built, uh, his assistant coaches, of course, you have to give a lot of credit to, uh, to owner Pat Bolin, who snuck into the 49ers hotel way back when, and that's where things started. And uh, again, the feeling here, and I'm sure throughout the state of Colorado, Jim, very, very special. And I guess Terrell Davis confirmed for us he hasn't had a wink of sleep. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, you could see it. In uh, fact, you can see it in all of the players' eyes. They're very tired, but as Terrell said, he would give up sleep every single year to do just this type of thing. That's right. They've got six months to sleep. You know, Steve, uh, talk about Terrell Davis and what he means to this football club. You know, here's a guy who can rush for more than 100 yards uh, as he did yesterday in the Super Bowl. Still, since he didn't score a touchdown and really lighted up as he can sometimes, people think he had a relatively quiet day. But yeah. uh, as you say, he opened up uh, so much more flexibility for the offense. When you have to worry about Terrell Davis, John Elway can throw for 335 yards as he did yesterday. And you know, Jim, I think a lot of the people throughout the country, media in particular, said that that's what the Atlanta Falcons would have to do. Shut down the run and make John Elway beat you. And you saw on one play in particular when the secondary got a little too close expecting Terrell to get the ball. And you remember it, the 80-yard touchdown pass to number 80, Rod Smith, where uh, he burned Eugene Robinson, who's had a one heck of a weekend, shall we say, and leave it at that. But uh, I think the fact that defenses had to key on Terrell, on Howard Griffith, uh, at times, Detron Smith and certainly uh, the running capabilities of John Elway opened up the passing game. John, 18 of 29 for 336 yards and a touchdown. He got it done. He led this team to victory. And the uh, proof of the pudding, of course, is the Super Bowl MVP trophy. Mm -hmm. Steve John, thank you, sir. Thanks, Steve. And, and as Steve pointed out, the fans really have no access to the players exiting the plane. Most of the fans are gathering here at Civic Center Park or along the parade route, and they are really filling up quickly here. We've been seeing some pictures of the fans. Let's talk to Kevin Cork, who is in the midst of it right here in Civic Center Park. Kevin. Oh, boy, I tell you what, Kevin, it gets crazier by the second because, you see, you really find out who the diehard Bronco maniacs really are. I mean, some people get tattoos, other people will go out and buy a jersey or maybe a sweatshirt, and then there are guys like this guy right here with a painted face. What's your name, guy? My name is Brian Greeby. And where are you from, Brian? I'm from Westminster, and I got one thing to say. Hey, Falcons, haven't you heard? We beat those dirty birds. Yeah! yeah! Wow. He's a poet, and he didn't even know it. Let me find out what your name is, and tell me, how long have you been a Bronco fan? Of course, can you hear? Oh, sometimes born. Oh, well, I love that. Me too. Let me toss back to Jim and Kim. Good Bronco fans. Back to you guys. Yeah. Kevin, we'll get Kevin. back to you in a hurry. Right now, we want to send it out to uh, DIA. Right. Steve Johns is with Pat Bowen. Steve. Well, I think, first of all, we've got a lot of great players, uh, people that are really focused uh, and real good individuals. And then you can't, uh, I can't say enough about Mike Shanahan and the coaching staff. You know, uh, they've just done a terrific job. What was it? And I know that Mike was an assistant coach for you and Dan Reeves when he was here. That was has all been well documented but what was it that finally made you approach Mike Shanahan and say to him I want you to be my next head coach well uh, you know I, I had approached him uh, when, when uh, Dan left in, in in 92 and he wasn't ready then he, he spent another couple of years in, in uh, San Francisco which in hindsight was great because that three years of education that he had there was terrific and you know I knew at the time that uh, he when he when he coached the 1996 Super Bowl he was a guy in your wildest dreams when you bought this team back in the early 80s did you ever think I, I know that you thought yes it's possible but did you ever really think that you would be standing here today as a repeat Super Bowl champion uh, you know I I, I I think we all believe that we could get it done again you know uh, I, I think uh, we had a great uh, 
off-season conditioning program last year. We had a great training camp. Uh, obviously, the season started.